So today I want to talk about the new heat belt in the United States. Given our history of inadequate responses to climate change, we as a planet are on track to have a minimum increase in average temperatures of 1.5 degrees Celsius. This, of course, is now the best case scenario where we shut down all fossil fuel production today. Unfortunately, we've yet to see any true progress in that direction, and we are much more likely to see an average increase of 2 to 3 degrees Celsius, if not more, in the coming decades. While these averages tell the story quite adequately, today I wanted to explore this from a slightly different angle and talk about some information that's come out about the changing climate of the United States. Today, we look at a report of what temperature might look like in the summer of 2053 and explore what that means for our futures. So this information is brought to us by researchers from the nonprofit group First Street Foundation that estimates heat risks at the property level across the United States. According to their research, they found that the local hottest seven days of any particular area are expected to become the hottest 18 days over the next 30 years, with Miami-Dade County experiencing the most dramatic shift in this regard, where the region's seven hottest days, which include heat index temperatures at 103 degrees Fahrenheit, could increase to 34 days a year at that same temperature by 2053. So what we're seeing here is that the extreme temperatures of today are becoming the normal of 2053. By the time we reach this time, what we consider an extreme temperature will be that much hotter. And as we look more into this research, we find that according to their models, an extreme heat belt will encompass an area stretching from Texas and Louisiana to Illinois, Indiana, and even parts of Wisconsin. By 2053, the extreme temperatures, what we consider to be extreme temperatures, will be reaching heat index levels of 125 degrees Fahrenheit, affecting over 1,023 counties, an area home to more than 107 million people that covers a quarter of the current U.S. landmass. The model also estimates that just next year, 50 counties are expected to see temperatures beyond that figure. So these are very scary temperatures. But just to explore how dangerous they are, I want to make sure everyone's on the same page and take a look at some data from Arizona's Department of Health to understand how they assess the risk of such a heat index. So we find, according to Arizona's Department of Health Services, that the most extreme is at 130 plus degrees Fahrenheit of heat index. And uh, that, that is really close to this 125 level. But if we look at the range for 105 to 129 degrees Fahrenheit, we find that the health effects are sunstroke, heat cramps, and heat exhaustion are likely. Heat stroke is possible with prolonged exposure and or physical activity. The recommendations to deal with these temperatures are to avoid strenuous outdoor activity, stay indoors in an air-conditioned facility, stay well hydrated by drinking 10 gulps of water every 20 minutes. Meanwhile, given that this is on the high end, I think it's worth examining the fact that heat stroke is very likely to occur in the 130 plus range, which is just outside of the scope of what we're looking at. Now, furthermore, this 125 degree temperature range is already considered to be a danger of heat stroke by the weather services. So these will have devastating effects on people's lives. Just by being exposed to these temperatures, one can get sunstroke, heat stroke, and possibly die. This documentation already advises for people to stay inside in air conditioning. However, as I talked about in a recent video, imagine for just a moment, you're someone whose job requires you to labor outside in the heat in the extreme temperatures of today. People are already getting sick from these temperatures and dying due to heat exposure. Imagine in this extreme reality of 2053, where the heat index is 125 degrees Fahrenheit. If labor hasn't shifted in a direction of demanding those days off, of providing relief for workers by having them be able to do things like deliver packages or do agricultural work in the mornings and evenings on these extreme weather days, we are going to see more and more people perish. In fact, most of those days should probably be off. 
However, that is a future that we're going to have to confront and deal with in the coming 30 years. Further, we're also seeing that parts of the United States, especially in the West, are losing access to their water at a rapid pace. This brings up an important question. How will we handle this lack of water access 30 years from now, when we need even more of it, where we need people drinking water every 20 minutes to stay hydrated in these extreme temperatures, even with the air conditioning on, and there's less and less of it available for people? And in addition to all of this, the impact of the heat will extend not just to humans, but to the infrastructure that keeps us safe as well. We also know that infrastructure often fails at high temperatures, roads buckle, train tracks bend, and airport tarmacs can melt. This can cause a lot of dangerous circumstances when people are driving, taking the trains, or trying to, you know, fly. Because, you know, if the road buckles, what happens to your car when an accident happens? Or to buses if we actually reach that future? What happens when a train track bends and the train derails? And what happens when, you know, people can't travel and goods can't go from one place to another? Furthermore, the most dangerous aspect of this is that sometimes the power goes out. And when the power goes out, especially as more and more people are going to try to draw on electricity to stay cool, and as hydroelectric dams become more and more taxed, uh, we may find that people exposed to these extreme temperatures are going to end up getting sick and dying without relief. As I've talked about on this channel before with the Texas Electric Grid, we are inadequately prepared for such a disaster, especially as we're using free market solutions to try to deal with climate change. In 2053, the death toll could be enormous, given just how many people may be exposed to these drastically higher temperatures without any way to deal with it. There won't be an ability to have air conditioner. Water pumps may not work. What do we do in these circumstances? And further, it's not just the 125 degree heat indexes that we need to worry about. The same, same study shows that some areas may be seeing extreme weather events of more than 100, 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And I say extreme because it's extreme today, but by 2053, it's not. It's going to be the norm. There are going to be some parts of the country like we can see in Texas down here, where there are going to be more than 100 days in the year with dangerous conditions of 100 degrees Fahrenheit or greater. And not only will we see these temperatures increase on these absolute extreme days, but the longevity of these heat waves will continue to expand across the country, where we see that most parts of the United States will have more than a 50% chance, and in some areas, especially in this heat belt that we talked about, close to a 95% chance of seeing three consecutive local hot days at these temperatures, which is going to tax people, it's going to tax infrastructure, it's going to tax the way that we function. Um, you know, and this is going to leave little to no relief for people or infrastructure as we try to keep cool and keep the power on. And worst of all, these projections that I've been talking about today these projections are conservative, since it assumes that a future scenario where humans drastically cut their greenhouse gas emissions that are driving climate change and increasing uh, global temperatures are dealt with. If the world doesn't cut emissions soon, particularly through a rapid transition away from fossil fuels to clean energy, the future of extreme heat could look even worse than the maps in this report. And when we're looking at a climate pill that comes out that ends up expanding gas and oil production, this is not the reality that we need. Expanding methane into the atmosphere is not going to help us lower these temperatures. It, carbon isn't the only culprit, and we need to deal with this. We need to be switching to clean energy sources. And yeah, these are conservative estimates that I've brought you today. And this, this needs to be said. This doesn't even address what's going on in the rest of the globe in 2053. This is in the United States. This is in the first world. This is in a part of the globe that is going to technically have the wealth, funds, and resources, at least concentrated in billionaires, that are going to have the ability to at least somewhat address some of these issues. 
However, as the first world continues to extract wealth and resources from the third world, these exact same conditions that I'm describing right here are going to have even more catastrophic effects, especially on people from lands near the equator where some of these temperatures already exist as the normal. What are we going to see temperatures in the 140 degree range where no matter the humidity, it only takes 10 minutes of heat exposure to actually kill somebody? These extreme weather events, in addition to these higher temperatures, are going to lead to countless lives being lost globally, and it, those who do manage to make it out are going to be displaced without homes and struggling to find entry into a lot of these areas like the United States. And whether it be workers being exposed to higher temperatures, infrastructure like power plants and water systems failing, limited water supplies for any other number of reasons, or any of the numerous climate issues that exist that I've also covered on this channel. We're certainly going to see these situations exacerbated over the next 30 years. By 2053, both in the United States and the rest of the globe, these are the realities that we're looking at in a conservative estimate. These predictions are devastatingly scary as they are. And as we continue to do nothing, things are likely to get a lot worse. Our politicians are failing us daily, and we're running out of both time and options. We must organize if we want to see any chance of avoiding this outcome, or worse, in the next coming 30 years. This is our future. Grab it while we can. So with that said, if you've enjoyed what you've watched today, consider liking the video, subscribing, and leaving a comment, as well as joining my Discord where we have conversations on political topics like these. If you're in a financial place to do so, and only if you're in a financial place to do so, please do consider supporting me on Patreon, especially as political content like this can often be demonetized on YouTube. The links for everything that I mentioned are in the description down below. With that said, my name is Anarchist Terra, and I thank you so much for watching.